So we are on to round six. Final round of the Swiss portion of this tournament. I do emphasize this is a portion of the tournament. From here, it's going to be a tie... After this, is going to be like loads of tiebreakers. Basically, everyone who gets 5-1 in the Swiss is going to be in a tiebreaker bracket. And we're going to have a short break between the two, since you got to build up the bracket and do all this other stuff. But yeah, after round six, there's going to be a short break, and then the tiebreaker bracket se session or series or whatever. Which, depending on whether or not Mano 12 wins their match against Pet Turtle, will be either first place or second place, depending... <laughs> if Mana 12 wins, they are, they are first place, and it's just a question of second. Now, for now, though, watching to see if Anir is able to hold on to their chance to get into the final bracket. Anir going for Hovercraft. Yogg-Sadoth going for Amphbots. Wow, that's... That's just the way the map goes. <laughs> All right, so with Anir... Actually, I think we saw... Well, we saw this before. With Izzeride. So, yeah. This is Ampbot versus Hovercraft. Yogg-Sadoth yeah, going for a very quick conch and very quick quill. No early dagger coming. Well, not no starting dagger coming in here, unlike last time. And you're going in for energy reclaim. I like that. I respect that. I respect the hell out of that. You don't see a lot of energy reclaim. In this map, you got all these rocks, and you're thinking, oh, rocks. Got to reclaim rocks. And Nier's going, no, man. I got metal extractors. I can build metal extractors. What I care about is cheaping out an energy production for a little while. So I can get the metal extractors faster and get the units faster. It's like, once the, metal, once the wind generators are up, once the power production is up, then you're fine. Then you can start reclaiming the rocks. Yogg-Sothoth, however, looks to be going for, honestly, just not a reclaim focus strategy at all. Get all the metal extractors. Get the static economy, I guess. Save the reclaim for later. An understandable strategy if you can get a bit of an attrition advantage early on. Which, for Anthbot versus Hovercraft, isn't unlikely. I mean, it's really hard for Anthbot to really take much damage from daggers until the daggers get numerous enough. But Amphbot typically doesn't have massive hordes of units early on, so the daggers aren't going to be lion splashing their way through an army. And daggers don't have a huge amount of DPS, so, you know, they can be taken out pretty quickly by units like archers, for instance. Who outrange them and kick their butts. So with that, Yogg-Sothoth looking to find a nice little harassment path over to the south side of the map. It's going to be a bit of a tricky situation. I think Anir can defend this. Their commander has the standard laser. Ooh, it's going to be tricky. Bolas is coming around the side. Unfortunately, one of them is stuck on a rock. Bit of a pathfinding fail, unfortunately. Second one is able to come in, however. And Anir's commander, at least, is slowing things down. Got the Lotus up, so ultimately the lack of the Bolas did not slow things down too much. Same time, though, Dagger's coming in, trying to raid out Metal Extractors. Do take out a Conch. Very nice pick there. Anir, I'd say, kind of won that raiding phase. Pushed away Yogstoth's duck, and Yogstoth's ducks didn't do anything for the Daggers. So, Anir getting a little bit of a lead. Economically, also maintaining a bit of a lead, mostly thanks to Reclaim, but that's... Again, the rocks. Like there's, there's all these rocks in that. The reclaim is going to be relevant for the first five minutes at least. But for the first ten minutes, actually. The players are... They're saving the reclaim. They're going for the reclaim more when they have to than when they otherwise just could. Conch coming in here. Yogg-Sothoth making sure they don't excess too much. And here, on the other hand, getting a plate. Hey! All right, I'm really glad to see more plates being used. I mean, that's definitely one of those things where you kind of aren't entirely sure, like, is that, is that valid? Like, do we use plates? It's like, yeah. Yeah, high-level players use plates. With Hover, it, it is 
an interesting choice. I don't think it's a bad choice. It's just an interesting choice because you only really had the Lance as a single heavy unit. But then again, if you're building a lot of light units, plates are also very useful. Yogstoth, on the other hand, massing caretakers for a factory that really does benefit from plates greatly thanks to the Grizzlies. But they're also not going for mass Grizzly right now. So Yogstoth is in an okay position, but Anir is in a very strong position. Okay, Mace Bolas. Interesting choice. Actually, yeah, Mace. Okay, Mace is pretty expensive. I could see having to play for that. To keep pumping out Bolas is what getting the Mace set up. The ducks come in here, and they are completely dead because Bolas. You gotta, like, outskirm them. They kind of skirm a riot. It's sort of a weird choice because you gotta outrange them enough to avoid the slow. But you also gotta out DPS them so that they just don't kill you. Archers probably work okay. I think archers do both, actually. Range 230, range 255. Okay, archers barely do both, but they do do both. I mean, the ducks... I guess for, for cost, though, 190 to 80. I mentioned before, yeah, it's a pretty big difference in cost. It's not the worst thing in the world, but still... On the other hand, boys are a great option because they slow down the bolus. Like, ha ha, how do you like slow, bolus? Actually, with that, Yogstoth is managing to at least set up defenses around the map, obviously for the reclaim, but hey, get some economy, get some old defended economy. It's all reclaimed now, but they've got the they got the wind for it. Although admittedly it's wind, so it's a little iffy. But they do have the power for it. So they're not accessing yet. They have the build power for it. So again, not accessing yet. Quite a bit of wind or quite a bit of energy in storage. So with that, there is a pretty good shot at Yogstoth getting into this game or getting strong lead in this game. At the same time though, the Bolus is coming around. Looking to break this up. The caretaker, however, did his job. There's no metal extractors in the center, just the rocks. But it is a question of whether or not the mace is able to start taking care of this. I mean, the mace is really the major asset Anir has built to help deal with Yogsatoth's army. And there's only one of them. And it's not doing so hot. It's kind of dead. Boluses are still a decent choice. But again, they're coming in for the raiding. And they're not going to be able to get in here before the lotus is up. One lotus won't stop them. The boys, however might be an issue. But yeah, one Lotus won't be a deal, deal breaker just because the slow beam. Ooh, only one. Oh, one bullet dies. Oof, the Liffy, but hey. Free conch, free metal extractor. Boys can't get in their time. It's a suicide mission, but it might be worth it. The bullets just keep moving up. They can get rid of basically everything else. The ducks have no chance, as typical. Or, oh, they do. Oh. No, bullets just go for it. Just take care of the ducks. Oh, okay, well, uh, the... I think that the opportunity is gone. The window of opportunity has has passed. And actually, there is room to escape. But why not kill another metal extractor? Yogg-Sothoth, same time, losing a lot of mid-ground. They're trying to get the defenses to deal with that, but the second mace is far better defended and far better supported than its predecessor. It's going to have no problem taking care of some of these defenses. The eastern side of the map is basically all in years now. South side still kind of belongs to Yogstoth, but I'm starting to think that this is not going to last. I and mean, the Bolus is looking to break that chokehold, and the scalpels on top of that are going to make it extremely difficult to hold, even when you consider the Bolus' low range. Scalpel mace over to the north, just to try to harass out what they can, break break up some of the metal extractors, and a near, mostly thanks to reclaim, but there's still plenty of it, turning out a very strong economic game. F-Boss not switching over to the late game strategy. Not switching over to basically Grizzly. Surprisingly, also not Mass Archer. I'm really surprised Yogsnoth has not been using Archers. I mean, in this situation against all the Bolases, I think the Archers would be a much better option, but no, we're not seeing any of them. I don't know if that's because Yogsnoth is thinking of Archers as they were before, which was kind of useless without water and even kind of useless with water. But no, archers are just, you know, straight-up Sonic Blast. It's it's a very strong unit. 
So I would recommend using archers if you have the opportunity, but... Yogstoth sticking to ducks. Ooh, same time, Lotus goes down. Over to the northeast, that opens up the metal extractor. Oh, unfortunately the mace is going to go down. I don't know why it tried to go into the boy. It, it does not win against boy, and it is back going to die against boy. But that bought enough time for another lance to be built up. And hey, there it is. The lance uses the pad. While bolts get built. I'm not sure if Yogstoth feels confident actually building up other... Th Wait, is that, is that an archer? No. I don't know if Yogstoth feels confident building up any large units just because... I mean, it's not really a great position to be in. Again, I think archer would be the, the solution here. I mean, that or a straight-up fact switch, but I think Archer would be the way to go. Boys really aren't. The unit, the boluses are too fast. And I like the idea, like I said, you know, slow them down, let boluses have a taste of their own medicine. Sorry, let that... Well, in either case, but... Let the, yeah, the boluses. Did I say boluses? Yeah, I said boluses. It's been... It's been a while. <laughs> this has been a long tournament. I'm, I'm starting to have... I'm starting to accidentally say exactly what I mean to say and not realize it. But accidental or no, Yogstoth losing their factory, losing their caretakers, losing to Mass Bolas, and like I said, archers will deal with this, but it's just none were built. That was the problem. Didn't have any archers. Had a single. Oh my goodness, that bullets made five times cost. I guess if it killed the caretakers, yeah, I would do that. Well, Lance is up, I believe. Yeah, Lance is up. Lance is up, another mace is up. No yet another mace is in the is in the pot. It is all ready. And you're looking for one last push to take this, and I think they're gonna be able to. That seems pretty confident. And that is my cat. I imagine you all heard that. That was my cat. His name is Andre. He is the best kitty. Anyhow, with with Anir setting up with so many boluses. I mean, Anir just really has had the economic advantage this entire time. And boluses are a great choice. Stardust, not a bad choice to counter, but the sheer number of boluses... Actually, no. No, that's just a really good choice to counter. This is actually... This this could be the one chance Yogstoth has. The commander is still going to go down, though. Unfortunately, the boluses may go down. Oh, the boluses are all going to die in response. Man, that Stardust was... That was value. Unfortunately, lost the lost the commander, but that was still massive value. Suck, buddy. But yeah, that was still massive value. And Nier, however, has many other choices for what they can attack. Yogstoth realizes that, throws in the towel, and Anir gets 5-1 score, and will be moving on to the bracket. Pretty much guaranteed. Alright, what is left? So if you look at the current standings, I might as well refresh in the middle. E. Man of 12 did win. They beat Pet Turtle. They have guaranteed first place. So the bracket elimination will be for second place, not first place. Beyond that, of the ones that are completed, Pet Turtle, Randy, and Kshatriya are not going to be in the finals. Gorda is. Anir also is. And Izzeride and Dregs, I believe they're against each other. So the winner of that is also going to be in. And that is basically that. Actually, if it's right and Dregs is still going, that'd be a great match to look at. Is Izzerud and Dregs still going? They are. Izzerud. Yes, they are. Awesome. Let's check them out. Oh, it's on Prestige, too. Let's see if this map has been developed in the meantime. Sorry, buddy. I'll be there in a second. I'm busy. All right. So we're moving on to the, well, Golda and Randy was, wait, that means, yeah, Golda's already won. So yeah, Israel and Dregs. The last match to determine who is going into the bracket elimination stage. The winner of this goes into the bracket elimination stage. That's it. Well, that was weird. Oh, who won this? Let's, let's find out. I'll be there in a second, buddy. Alright, well, I'm going to have to take a break after this, because apparently I am needed. 
So, this will be the last match I cast. It looks like Izzeride. Oh, Izzeride getting a very strong push in there. Spiders was used at the top, but taking out the side. Wait, what the heck? What in the world happened? Oh, I guess Drag's just left. Okay, so Izzeride moves on to the finals, and we have... A, we, all right, so I'm going to take a break, wait for the finals, I need to get water, and apparently my kitty needs something, so we are going to be moving on to, we're going to be waiting for tie breaks for now, take a bit of a break, take the time to get some water, get some food, I will be definitely doing both of those, oh, definitely getting the water, I might wait on food, definitely getting water though. And we'll be back here once the tiebreaker brackets are determined. <laughs> 